ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम अनुजा कुमार एंड विद मी इज सायरा मुजतबा द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी लेज फाउंडेशन स्टोन फॉर फोर लेनिंग ऑफ टू की हाईवेज इन महाराष्ट्र also dedicates to the nation multiple road projects for boosting connectivity to pandharpur srinagar joins unesco creative cities network 2021 under the crafts and folk arts category prime minister describes it a fitting recognition for vibrant cultural ethos of srinagar center amends legal metrology packaged commodities rules 2011 for enhanced protection of consumer rights President Ramnath Kovin to confer Padma awards for the year 2021 today. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage crosses 109 crore mark. Uttar Pradesh government aims to inoculate its entire eligible population with at least one dose of COVID vaccine by end of this month. United Kingdom recognizes India made co-vaccine for inbound travel. Heavy rain disrupts normal life in several parts of Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. Med department warns of heavy downpours over Tamil Nadu coast for another 3 days. And in the ICC Men's T20 Cricket World Cup, India beat Namibia by 9 wickets in Dubai, England to take on New Zealand in the first semi-final tomorrow. as india created history by administering over 100 crore vaccine doses against covid-19 all india radio salutes all the doctors nurses other frontline workers and all those who got vaccinated and made this possible even though the country has achieved this feat we caution our listeners that the battle against covid is not yet over we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and also help others get vaccinated during the festival season please follow these three simple steps Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any covid related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events are being organized by the government as a part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. To commemorate the occasion as a Jan Utsav, All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in the morning news since 16th of August and will continue till 15th August 2022. India Post has joined hands as the logistics partner with All India Radio News for the Amrit Mahotsav quiz. Recalling our yesterday's question, When did the Santhal uprising take place against the East India Company? Who led the rebellion? The correct answer is 30th June 1855. It was led by Siddhu and Kanhu Murmu. Their brothers Chand, Bhairav and sister Phulo and Jhano joined hands with them. Oppressed by zamindari system, landlords, money lenders and the Britishers, they mobilized Santhals and declared a rebellion against the East India Company. It expanded from Raj Mahal to Bhagalpur to Birbhum. In the local language, the rebellion is called Hool, which means a movement for liberation. AIR News got an overwhelming response from its listeners across the world, and the one lucky winner of the quiz is Abhinandan Sharma from Behar Kuthera, Kangra, in Himachal Pradesh. And coming to our 26th question of the Amrit Mahotsav quiz in English, what is the slogan of Ram Prasad Bismil? I repeat, what is the slogan of Ram Prasad Bismil? Listeners can send their responses to the question over WhatsApp on 8826546262. I repeat, 8826546262 or through email on Amrit Mahotsav quiz. at the rate prasarbharati.gov.in i repeat amrit mahotsav quiz at the rate prasarbharati.gov.in 
प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेन्द्र मोदी हैज सेड बेसिक मंत्रा ऑफ सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास हैज बीन इंस्पायर्ड फ्रॉम द टीचिंग्स ऑफ लॉर्ड विठल एंड भगवान विठल हैज कनेक्टेड हिम विथ ऑल अदर डिविटीज The Prime Minister said this after laying the foundation stone last afternoon for four laning of five sections of Sri Sant Gyaneshwar Maharaj Palki Marg NH965 and three sections of Sri Sant Tukaram Maharaj Palki Marg NH965G in Maharashtra's Pandharpur via video conferencing. Aaj yahan Sri Sant Gyaneshwar Maharaj Palki Marg aur Sant Tukaram Maharaj Palki Marg iska shilanyas hua hai. श्रीमन ज्ञानेश्वर महाराज पालखी मार्ग का निर्माण पांच चरणों में होगा और संत तुकाराम महाराज पालखी मार्ग का निर्माण तीन चरणों में पूरा किया जाएगा इन सभी चरणों में 350 किलोमीटर से ज्यादा लंबाई के हाईवे बनेंगे और इस पर ग्यारह हजार करोड़ रुपए से अधिक का खर्च किया जाएगा इसके सबसे खास बात यह है कि इन हाईवे के दोनों तरफ पालखी यात्रा के लिए पैदल चलने वाले श्रद्धालुओं के लिए वारकरियों के लिए विशेष मार्ग बनाए जाएंगे अबाउट 221 हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी वन किलोमीटर्स ऑफ संत ज्ञानेश्वर महाराज पालखी मार्ग फ्रॉम देवे घाट टू मोहोल एंड अबाउट वन हंड्रेड थर्टी किलोमीटर्स ऑफ संत तुकाराम महाराज पालखी मार्ग फ्रॉम पाटस टू तोंडले बोंडले विल बी फोर लेन्ड विद डेडिकेटेड वॉकवेज फॉर पालखी ऑन आई दाइड These road projects are aimed at facilitating the movement of devotees to Pandharpur. Quoting Adi Shankaracharya, the Prime Minister said that Lord Vithal is the symbol of happiness and Pandharpur is the land of joyousness. The Prime Minister said road is the gateway of development. He invoked former Prime Minister late Atal Bihari Vajpayee and said where roads are built, development reaches there. Mr Modi said the Swachh Bharat Mission received support from the Varkaris or pilgrims as they too started nirmalwari he said in dindi a spiritual procession there is no caste discrimination mr modi urged the varkaris to plant saplings alongside the pathway that leads to the main pilgrim site which in future would grow into huge trees and provide shade mr modi said that he also wants to see pandharpur as one of the cleanest pilgrimage site in the country the prime minister also observed that majority of varkaris come from farming community and noted that when the farmers prosper the society too prospers he said a true annadata connects society and lives for society ek sachcha annadata samaj ko jodta hai samaj ko jeeta hai aur samaj ke liye jeeta hai aap se hi samaj ki pragati hai aur aapki hi pragati mein समाज की प्रगति है इसलिए अमृत काल में देश के संकल्पों में हमारे अन्नदाता हमारी उन्नति का बड़ा आधार है इसी भाव को लेकर देश आगे बढ़ रहा है During the event the prime minister also dedicated to the nation more than 223 kilometers of completed and upgraded road projects at different national highways for boosting connectivity to Pandharpur In a major recognition of the arts and crafts of Jammu and Kashmir, Srinagar has joined the UNESCO Creative Cities Network 2021 under the Crafts and Folk Arts category. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated the people of Jammu and Kashmir on the occasion. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said that he is delighted that beautiful Srinagar has joined the UNESCO Creative Cities Network with a special mention for its craft and folk art. He said it is a fitting recognition for the vibrant culture ethos of Srinagar. The center has amended the legal metrology package commodities rules 2011 for enhanced protection of consumer rights. The Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution has omitted rule 5 defining schedule 2 prescribing the pack sizes of various types of commodities. A new provision has been introduced to indicate the unit sale price on pre-packed commodities. which will allow easier comparison of the prices of the commodities at the time of purchase the amendments will come into effect from 1st of april next year the declaration of date of manufacture on pre-packed commodities is made mandatory under the revised rules the provisions of declarations of mrp has been simplified by removing illustration and providing for making the mandatory declaration of mrp in indian currency inclusive of all taxes this has allowed 
This has allowed the manufacturer to declare the MRP on pre-packed commodities in a simplified manner. President Ramnath Govind will confer Padma Awards for the year 2021 on prominent personalities at a ceremony in Rashtrapati Bhavan today. One of the highest civilian awards of the country, Padma Awards, are conferred in three categories, namely Padma Vibhushan, Padma Bhushan, and Padma Shri, in various disciplines and fields of activities, including art, social work, public affairs, science, trade, medicine, literature, sports, and civil service. This year, the list comprises seven Padma Vibhushan, ten Padma Bhushan, and 102 Padma Shri awards. Former Japan Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, sculptor Sudarshan Sahu, and Islamic scholar Maulana Bahiduddin Khan and others will be given Padma Vibhushan. Eminent singer S.P. Bala Subramaniam will be honored with the award posthumously. Former Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan, singer K.S. Chitra, prominent poet Chandra Shekhar Kambara, retired civil servant Nripendra Mishra, and others will get Padma Bhushan. former gujarat chief minister keshu bhai patel former assam chief minister tarun gogoi and former union minister ram vilas paswan will be honored with padma bhushan posthumously the list of padma shri awardees include social worker sindhu tai sapkal musician bombay jeshri british film director peter brook and greek indologist nicolas kanzanas former governor of goa mridula sinha will be given the award posthumously Yesterday the president had presented Padma awards for the year 2020 President Ramnath Kovind will preside over the 51st conference of governors and lieutenant governors on 11th of this month at Rashtrapati Bhavan this will be the fourth conference to be presided over by president Kovind apart from governors and lieutenant governors of all the states and union territories Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Home Minister Amit Shah will also attend the conference. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lays foundation stone for four laning of two key highways in Maharashtra. Also dedicates to the nation multiple road projects for boosting connectivity to Pandharpur. Srinagar joins UNESCO Creative Cities Network 2021 under the Crafts and Folk Arts category. Prime Minister describes it a fitting recognition for vibrant cultural ethos of Srinagar. Center amends legal metrology packaged commodities rules 2011 for enhanced protection of consumer rights. President Ramnath Govind to confer Padma Awards for the year 2021 today. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage crosses 109 crore mark. Uttar Pradesh government aims to inoculate its entire eligible population with at least one dose of covid vaccine by end of this month. United Kingdom recognizes India made Covaxin for inbound travel. Heavy rain disrupts normal life in several parts of Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. Met department warns of heavy downpours over Tamil Nadu coast for another 3 days. And in ICC Men's T20 Cricket World Cup, India beat Namibia by 9 wickets in Dubai. England to take on New Zealand in the first semi-final tomorrow. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. India's COVID vaccination coverage has crossed 109 crore mark. Out of the total vaccination, more than 74 crore 19 lakh vaccine doses have been given as the first dose, while over 34 crore 83 lakh doses have been administered as the second dose. Union Health Ministry said that more than 54 lakh 10,000 vaccine doses were administered till 7 p.m. yesterday. Uttar Pradesh government has set the target to inoculate 25 to 30 lakh people per day to provide at least one dose of COVID vaccine security cover to all the eligible people in the state by the end of this month. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has asked the officials to continue the vaccination in the state till 10 p.m. in the evening. more from our correspondent out of 15 crore population eligible for covid vaccination 9.95 crore people have got at least one dose of covid vaccine and around 5 crore people are still left 
चीफ मिनिस्टर योगी आदित्यनाथ हैज आस्ट ऑफिशियल्स टू वर्क इन मिशन मोड टू इनाकुलेट दोज हु हैव नॉट रिसीव्ड एनी डोज ऑफ कोविड वैक्सीन चीफ मिनिस्टर स्पोक टू ऑल डिस्ट्रिक्ट मजिस्ट्रेट्स एंड सीनियर ऑफिशियल्स यस्टरडे थ्रू वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग एंड सेड दैट इफ द टारगेट इज नॉट अचीव दैन डिस्ट्रिक्ट मजिस्ट्रेट्स विल बी हेल्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबल ही आस्ट ऑफिशियल्स टू टेक हेल्प ऑफ पब्लिक रिप्रेजेंटेटिव एंड कंटिन्यू द वैक्सीनेशन टिल टेन पी एम इन इवनिंग फॉर द कन्वीनियंस ऑफ वर्किंग पीपल सुशील चंद्र तिवारी ए आई आर न्यूज लखनऊ यूनाइटेड किंगडम हैज रिकग्नाइज्ड इंडिया मेड को वैक्सीन डिवेलप्ड बाय भारत बायोटेक इन अ स्टेटमेंट द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट सेड को वैक्सीन विल बी ऑफिशियली रिकग्नाइज्ड फ्रॉम 22 नवंबर को वैक्सीन विल बी एडेड टू द लिस्ट ऑफ अप्रूव्ड कोविड वैक्सीन्स फॉर इनबाउंड ट्रैवल बेनिफिटिंग मोर फुली वैक्सीनेटेड पीपल फ्रॉम कंट्रीज लाइक इंडिया passengers who have been fully vaccinated with covaxin and have received their vaccine certificate will not be required to take a pre departure test day 8 test or self isolate upon arrival in the united kingdom the travel rules are being further simplified as all people under the age of 18 will be treated as fully vaccinated at the border and will be able to enter england without self isolating on arrival Heavy rain has disrupted normal life in several parts of Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. Regional Med Department has said that a low pressure area is very likely to be formed in the southeast bay of Bengal in the next 24 hours. It is likely to move west northwest west and concentrate into a depression and reach near north Tamil Nadu coast by early Thursday morning. Med Department has warned that there would be continuous rain over Tamil Nadu coast for another 3 days. Our Chennai correspondent has filed this report. The government has said that four lives have been lost and more than 1400 people have been moved into relief camps in various places in the city. Low-lying roads have been cut off in many places due to flooding in rain hit districts. More than 5000 relief centers have been set up and 87 helipads are ready in case of rescue mission. NDRF and SDRF are already involved in carrying out activities in flooded areas. Medical camps are conducted at relief centers to prevent outbreak of any disease. Water has been released from the reservoirs to a minimum level as rains will continue till 11th. Ministers for principal secretaries and a nodal officer will coordinate rain related activities including preventive and relief measures joy yeah yeah news chennai basic countries have said that the lack of a serious approach to climate finance will jeopardize the enhanced mitigation and adaptation ambition as well as net zero pledges of parties taking the floor on behalf of basic brazil south africa india and china india delivered the group statement at the joint stock take plenary at cop26 in glasgow it said the basic countries support strong and credible domestic mitigation actions by developed countries parties without undue reliance on cheap offsets to maintain their high carbon and unsustainable lifestyles delivering the statement lead negotiator india and additional secretary in environment ministry richa sharma said the grouping supports markets that are credible and have high environmental integrity and strong non market approaches as well with the un climate summit or the conference of parties cop26 in glasgow around all india radio brings to you a ready reckoner every day under the cop26 explainer series we shall bring to you daily the terms and concepts in use during the conference Today we shall talk about adaptation. Adaptation is the process of adjustment to climate change and its effects. The purpose is to reduce the harms and utilize the potential opportunities. Adaptation seeks to lower the risks posed by the consequences of climate change. Examples of adaptation include using scarce water resources more efficiently, adapting buildings to future climate conditions and extreme weather events, and developing drought resistant crops. The adaptation programs result in creation of green jobs, reduce risk for the poor and vulnerable and protect our environment for future generations. AIR News spoke to Anish Day, Global Head Power and Utilities KPMG on the importance of climate adaptations. In future, most of energy delivery will be in the form of electricity, most of energy generation will also be in the form of electricity. And in that context, large electricity grids which take advantage of the time differences across the world especially when it comes to solar power becomes very very important and that's why this initiative of one world one sun one grid is also very important because the sun never sets at some part of the world and if we have the grid then we can transfer the energy from the plots where the sun is allowing generation to happen.
happen to the parts where generation is not happening. This is where the initiative is important. It should be led as a directional goal of interconnecting the world as much as possible. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News India's glorious fight for freedom is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the valiant struggle every day. On 9th of November 1947, Junagar was annexed to the Indian Territory. Hey! Junagar was a princely state in the Katiawad region, where most of other princely states had already acceded to India. The ruler of Junagar was Nawab Mahbat Khan, Rasul Khanji. In May 1947, Shah Nawaz Bhutto from Karachi became the Diwan of Junagar. Under his influence, the Nawab decided to accede to Pakistan on 15th of August. Though, the Nawab had earlier given the impression that the future of Junagarh lay in joining India. To satisfy the popular demand of the people of Junagarh, the then Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, made an offer to Pakistan to accept and abide by the verdict of the people of Junagarh in respect of the accession of the state to either of the dominions. People of the Junagar were becoming agitated with the Nawab and the situation was becoming tense with each passing day. After failing over a month to get a response from Pakistan to the offer, India put in place a series of measures that held the threat of military action against Junagar. The Nawab of Junagar fled to Karachi by air with his family and his pet dogs. On 8th of November, Bhutto asked the government of India to directly take over the administration of Junagar through the regional commissioner at Rajkot. India had indicated that it would want to formalize the arrangement through a plebiscite. This was held on February the 20th, 1948. Of around 2 lakh registered voters, only 91 cast their votes in favor of the accession to Pakistan. And thus, with the wish of the people, the princely state of Junagar became a part of India. Today is also the death anniversary of Pushpalata Das, a freedom fighter from Assam. At the age of just six years, she joined the Banar Sena to popularize the Khadi among the people and organized Chakra Sangh. Being inspired by her mother, she took pledge to free the motherland and never looked back ever since. At the age of 14, she was expelled from high school for protesting against the hanging of Bhagat Singh. During 1940, her studies came to an end when she was jailed for individual satyagraha from the year 1940 to 1942. Pushpalata Das was in Bombay as a member of the Women's Subcommittee of the National Planning Committee. During that period, she worked with Mridula Sarabhai and Vijaya Lakshmi Pandit for development and constructive works. In the year 1942, Pushpalata Das married Omio Kumar Das who was also a true Gandhian and a social worker. After her marriage, Pushplata organized a Shanti Bahini and Mrityu Bahini with her co-workers in Tezpur. Pushplata was supposed to lead the procession to put the national tricolor flag on the compound of Gokpur police station. However, at that time fate intervened and Kanaklata Barua took charge over the procession from Pushpalata Das and fell to the British bullets. Post-independence, 
she served as a member of parliament. She also worked as an editor of a well-known Assamese magazine, Jayanti. Pushplata Das was offered the Tamrapatra by the Indian government for her services rendered during the freedom movement. But she refused to accept the Tamrapatra. The noble soul breathed her last on the 9th of November 2003 at the age of 88 years. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar AIR News Ke Sang. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmark Gold Jewelry. For any consumer-related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number 14404, issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India, Jago Grahak Jago. In ICC T20 World Cup 2021, India beat Namibia by nine wickets in Dubai last night, when India made 136 for one in 15.2 overs after Namibia scored 132 for eight in stipulated 20 overs. Now England and New Zealand will play the first semi-final tomorrow at Sheikh Zayed Stadium in Abu Dhabi, while Pakistan and Australia will play the second semi-final, which is set to take place on Thursday at Dubai International Cricket Stadium. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. National capital Delhi will have shallow fog. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky. Chennai is expected to have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Kolkata will have mainly clear sky, and Hyderabad may have partly cloudy sky with haze. And now an overview of today's newspapers. The Times of India in its top headline writes: From Sundarban's doctor to Bhopal victims' rights activist, India honors its heroes as the president presented Padma Awards to the achievers yesterday. In another boost for India's vaccine drive, a front-page headline in Hindustan Times writes: Zaidus job cleared for kids to cost government 265 rupees as center places order for 10 million doses of Zycov D. In the 1997 Upar cinema fire tragedy case, which claimed 59 lives, the pioneer notes: Ansar gets seven years jail for tampering Upar proof. And finally, the Hindu cites a proud moment for all of us as UNESCO picks Sri Nagar as creative city, paving way to represent its handicrafts on the global stage. Before we end the bulletin, a reminder of today's question of the Amrit Mahotsav quiz. What is the slogan of Ram Prasad Bismil? I repeat, what is the slogan of Ram Prasad Bismil? What's up your response on 8826546262? I repeat, 8826546262 or through email on amritmahotsavquiz at the rate prasadbharati.gov.in. Celebrate 75 years of India's independence by participating in Amrit Mahotsav Quiz with EIR News. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lays foundation stone for four laning of two key highways in Maharashtra. Also dedicates to the nation multiple road projects for boosting connectivity to Pandharpur. Sri Nagar joins UNESCO Creative Cities Network 2021 under the Crafts and Folk Arts category. Prime Minister describes it a fitting recognition of for vibrant cultural ethos of Sri Nagar. Center amends legal metrology packaged commodities rules 2011 for enhanced protection of consumer rights. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage crosses 109 crore mark. President Ramnath Kovind to confer Padma Award for the year 2021 today. United Kingdom recognizes India made co vaccine for inbound travel. Heavy rain disrupts normal life in several parts of Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. Med department warns of heavy downpours over Tamil Nadu coast for another three days. And in the ICC Men's T20 Cricket World Cup, India beat Namibia by nine wickets in Dubai. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.